In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Domino Stecum, Benedicta Tum, Mulierebus, et Benedictus Fructus Ventris Tui, Iesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis pictoribus, nunc et nuova mortis nostri, Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Procedamos in pace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, who came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith, we may possess in unending love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison and led them out and said, go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison. So they came back and reported, we found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. And then someone came in and reported to them, The men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went out and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. 
Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we have, of course, a continuation in the Acts of the Apostles of uh, the apostolic witness to the Lord and their diligence. Um, this is post-Pentecost, really. Their diligence in giving testimony to the Lord. They overcome their fears by the grace of God. And now they um, are uh, going in defiance of the authorities who want to silence the truth, who do not want the name of Jesus to be proclaimed and who are obviously threatened. And uh, here we have uh, the Gospel of St. John, in which St. John <coughs> is uh, uh, saying here in this third chapter, that 16th verse, which is so powerful, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. And that really comes down to the fundamental uh, conviction that we're called to have ourselves, whether we're going to live as true believers. And if we really believe in the Son, we're going to have a living relationship with Him. We're going to keep His commands. And we're not going to have an entitlement attitude where we think we can receive the sacraments and be in serious sin. Uh, but rather, we'll humbly go before the sacrament of reconciliation to be reconciled with God and to beg God for the grace to overcome our weaknesses and our frailties and to ask the Lord to help us with our attitude when we have a bad attitude or when we're willful and we were, are even malicious in our intentions or our purposes, that uh, we pray to the Lord knowing that he is the source of our life and our fulfillment and he is the one who has that refiner's fire that will purify our hearts and souls, but we must be willing to submit to him. And, and that is a choice that we made, of course. Maybe it was made for us at baptism, but then we ratified that as we matured and came along and received First Holy Communion and uh, reconciliation, confirmation, and, and um, our vocational sacrament if we received that. Uh, but in all of these things, there is this commitment that we make to the Lord 
and it must be one of resolve, of resolve to God. And um, to understand that, that uh, it really means eternal life or eternal uh, damnation. Eternal life in joy with God, in the communion of the Holy Trinity, with the communion of the angels and the saints, or damnation. To live in the state of the damned uh, in absolute misery with the demons and uh, the other damned. And so uh, we have to really think about these things and realize that we do not know the day or the hour. Um, and so we need to be ready at all times and to have a relationship with the Lord that is close. And we are like those apostles who are ready to give it all away right now, to give up our life right now if it's required of us, rather than deny Jesus Christ. And, and for most of us, we wouldn't be brought to such a dramatic end of this earthly life. For most of us, it's a decision to live moment by moment, saying yes to God in the small things. But it's precisely in those small things that paves the way for us to have the wherewithal, by the grace of God, to say yes in the great things, and the things that are decisive. And uh, in, no matter how great or insignificant from the standpoint of drama uh, the events might be. Every moment is about living in communion with God. And to know the joy and the peace of being in communion with God. How many people in this world are trying to cover over and comp uh, compensate for their lack of peace because they're not in a state of grace? They're unhappy. And they're going to psychologists, and they're using drugs or alcohol or sex or other things to compensate, to distract from their interior uh, misery because they're not rightly oriented in their lives. They're not rightly ordered. They're in uh, a lack of integrity uh, rather than being in the integrity of the life of grace and the communion that binds us to God and binds us to one another in love. And so the only way that can happen is that we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we believe him, we believe everything that he teaches and, and what he gives us through his church in the matters of faith and morals, um, and that we uh, live that well. And we be ready to be his witnesses in season and out of season. And we have this timeless uh, relationship with the Lord that isn't conditioned upon public opinion. It's not conditioned upon uh, the way the world is going and what's hot and fashionable at any given moment and what's not, what's in favor or what's out of favor. Uh, favor with who? Whose favor do we want to be in? And so um, as we're celebrating this beautiful Easter season, these I think are worthwhile thoughts. We of course uh, want to be full of joy uh, because we are renewed in this great mystery of the victory of Jesus Christ over sin and death. But as we celebrated on Sunday, he came and the first gift that he gave after his resurrection, he breathed on the apostles and told them, whose sins you forgive will be forgiven, whose sins you hold bound will be held bound. That means he wanted us to have the fruit of his paschal mystery, his passion, death, and resurrection, which is the means of forgiveness for sins conversion of heart, turning to the Lord, receiving his gifts, and then persevering in the pursuit of holiness. And making that the thing for which we uh, long so much, to share in the life of the saints in communion with the Trinity for everlasting. And that, begin, that begins now. So with that in mind, let us continue with this celebration where we are taken into the precincts of heaven into the divine liturgy in communion with um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at the banquet, the wedding banquet of the Lamb, of the victor, of Jesus, a bridegroom who gave himself for his bride, the church. And now the church strains to give herself to him wholeheartedly, whole and entire, in total gift of self and in uh, unbounded love, a love that is possible only by the grace of God. Let us now offer our prayers of petition. We pray for the universal church.
that she may always be renewed in giving this timeless witness to the world of Jesus, the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our nation, our people, our leaders. We pray for divine assistance in overcoming uh, the trials that we are facing. And uh, we uh, return to our knees before God with humility and contrition for our sins, wanting to make reparation and being cooperative with the grace of God. We pray to the Lord. For uh, the, the uh, complete and total abolition from the face of the earth for all time of the horrible scourge of abortion and every other act of evil perpetrated against the dignity, the sacred dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. For renewal of those who share in the sacrament of holy matrimony, in those bonds of love that is the communion and the covenant uh, between spouses and with God, we pray to the Lord. For a renewal and a flourishing of life in uh, the spirit uh, of true living faith and uh, uh, the the, the uh, ardent burning love of fidelity to the Lord uh, in whatever circumstances, in whatever the uh, season, we pray to the Lord. For the poor souls in purgatory and for those who grieve the loss of loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear these, our petitions. You know all of our needs. Grant what we need in your merciful and providential love. We ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, his assisting Bishop George, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti in unitati Spiritus Sancti Omnis o honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait 
the joy, the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, Qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Last of those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and 
lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Friends, I want to uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, 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 live feed uh, celebration of Holy Mass um, and um, assure you with my prayers for all of you. Uh, uh, we have had uh, uh, news of illness as well as uh, one of our parishioners um, uh, has passed away on Divine Mercy Sunday, um, uh, May Del Burkhalter. Uh, please pray for her and her family and um, uh, also uh, you know be aware that at 4 p.m. we will have again uh, Vespers in the ordinary form you're, we will live stream it so you're welcome to join also there's the opportunity to arrange to have uh, candles lit and, and put out uh, on your behalf at the Chapel of Our Lady of Perpetual Help so you can go to our parish website and uh, fill out the form and, uh, we appreciate the offering. The offering covers not only the cost of the candle, but also helps us a little bit with the uh, financial support for the life of the parish, which is very, very important so we can continue our mission. Um, and, uh, but, but your prayers, you know, your intentions are offered and uh, keeping that vigilance, uh, that vigil light, that votive candle uh, before the image of our Lady of Perpetual Help who, in, uh, who intercedes to her son. Our devotion to our mother, the Blessed Mother, the Mother of God, uh, is, is very important. So uh, I did a little video. You can see the video that gives a fuller explanation and shows you the chapel and the candle stands and so forth. And uh, so uh, there we were down to only one or two candles uh, that were lit. And uh, now the numbers are increasing. We're happy to see that. But it, it manifests sort of a presence. Uh, on one hand, it's your presence here spiritually, uh, in asking Our Lady, uh, Blessed Mother's intercession, and uh, a, a spirit of communion also with the Lord and with the Church. So um, this is one of any number of possible ways, perhaps, for us to maintain and, and stay very much connected and, and have uh, a spiritual communion with the Lord. So um, uh, with that, I'm going to um, impart the final, uh, the final blessing and the dismissal, and then I'll have some concluding prayers, and then we will uh, recess. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. The Prayer of Abandonment by Blessed Charles of Foucauld. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. The prayer uh, to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O glorious Prince, St. Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of Souls, Vanquisher of Rebel Spirits, Servant of the House of the Divine King, and our Admirable Conductor, you who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil, who turn to you with confidence, and enable us, by your gracious protection, to serve God more and more faithfully every day. And now, the, um, the prayer in time of epidemic. Vouchsafe to hear us, O God, our only salvation, and through the intercession of the glorious and blessed Mary, Mother of God, ever Virgin, of thy blessed martyr Sebastian, and of all the saints, deliver thy people from the terrors of thy wrath, and restore their confidence by the outpouring of thy compassion. 
be moved to pity, O Lord, at our earnest entreaties, and heal the illnesses of body and soul, so that experiencing thy forgiveness we may ever rejoice in thy blessing. We beseech thee, O Lord, grant us a hearing as we devoutly raise our petitions to thee, and graciously turn away the epidemic of plague which afflicts us, so that mortal hearts may recognize that these scourges proceed from thine indignation, and cease only when thou art moved to mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and evermore. Amen. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia, Qui ha que meruisti portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut dixit, Alleluia, Orha pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Prosit. Deo gracias.